Sports 1. Tim Watson went up early, got the ride, and took one of the most sensational marks one can see, and he can't miss this one. He's missed a lot of easy ones. He's been a bustling, brilliant, aggressive player with tremendous skill, and he's kicked four goals, and he's missed four or five very easy ones, but that puts Essendon in a very commanding position, and what a magnificent mark by this teenager. There he is, hands on hips. He's thoroughly and utterly satisfied with that one. So in the first minute of the final quarter here at Windy Hill, Essendon race away to a 32-point lead. As Madden fished the ball forward, but uh, not very constructively, Cunningham gets it down to Scanlon, who misses it. Going after it is Nagel, whose hand passes out to Marsh, who cleverly steps out of trouble, and then a shocking kick to Fletcher. Fletcher runs around Barker. Bit slow, but he gets the ball back to Scanlon, who fumbles. Scanlon playing soccer, gives it to Saru. Saru tries to give it to Barker. Fletcher grabs it. Kick it long out of trouble for a moment, purely anyway. Van de Haan is sent in front of Peravic. We're shaping the hand pass to Boyd, but Van de Haan will go long. Is it long? Down towards Merritt. Yes, Barker makes a low. Merritt. Roger Merritt from Canada. Interchange player who's been on the ground since half time. During that third quarter, he replaced Crow. And here he is in the forward pocket. A chance to make the difference. 38 points in favour of the Bombers. Right through the centre. His first goal. And it's the 12th. They go to 12, 17, 89. Leading St Kilda, 7, 9, 51. 38 points to this. Essendon turned to the lead of 26 points with two goals in the first four and a half minutes from spectacular football. Brilliant mark by Watson, a great mark by Merritt, and a something 70 metre kick by Van der Haar. Well, the Essendon stand is coming to life. First, the eight points in front for Bombers. Umpire Chapman, one of his bad bounces, not often does he do so. Shots out from Mansfield, out the open territory, and down comes Tim Watson. Grabs it, goes for the run, look at the screen on him, goes for goal, and puts it through. Puts it through for his pick. He's got lightning acceleration for those first five or six metres, bolted away from Green, and got the difficult goal. Missed a lot of easy ones, but been a sensational player, and fast putting his name on best on ground. 44 points now, the margin in favour of Essendon. Three goals in the first four and a half minutes of this final term. They've rocketed away. And look set to win their first game since July the 8th last year. As it's fisted away there by Madden. And a free kick to Green coming through was tackled poorly by Van der Haar, who gets up limping a little proppy. And this is a 17th kick for Green, who has been a sterling defender and one of St Kilda's best all, all day. There's the kick by Green. Up high was Saru, who drives the ball deep into attack. Fletcher comes through to spoil Evans. He does it well. There's Bond with a quick snap for goal. Is it bouncing through? It is. For a goal. Kicked by Bond. His first. And St Kilda's first since half time. But they still trail by 38 points. Five minutes into the final turn. That ball of bonds had turned both ways. Richie Benno or Maxi Walker would have been proud of that one. It was a very fortunate goal for the Saints as it rolled on and on and rolled the right way. Side bottom takes a free kick. Some anxious Essendon player which brings the centre square. Side bottom's kick is not a long one. Barker goes up in front nicely, Scanlon. Mansfield in trouble, but he's out of it. Down it goes towards centre half forward. Paul Van der Haar and Perovic. Russell Green's got the run of it. Jim O'Day picks up, tackled high, gets it across towards Thomas. Thomas cleverly back to Green. Green down to the half-forward line, Fletcher's in grand position, but misjudges it badly. Everybody does, and Scanlon's got it. Scanlon's short pass to Marsh. Marsh tackled by Cunningham when not in possession. Breaks away strongly. Play on, says umpire Jackson. Marsh is beautifully shepherded. Loves the run. Feather wing he is. He'll go again. Then it's done, comes in the medium, and a good 50-yarder. Simon Madden underneath it, and takes the mark. Essendon demonstrates.
in complete aerial supremacy as Madden takes his nice mark. Well, great football, and Roger Merritt did some fine shepherding there as Ian Mars kicked a very long one down and Madden took a very difficult one. Simon Madden, been one of the stars of the Essendon camp today. Very acute angle. Only about three or four metres out, his man on Mark Leftwood is not a good one, Simon Madden. Just squeezes through for one behind. 39 points in front, Essendon. Seven minutes gone, final term. It's 96 to 57. Can kill the skipper Barry Breen. Will restart. My word, he's had his hands full since half time with the explosive Tim Watson. There's the kick by Breen. Good mark by Bennett. In front of O'Keefe. Bennett goes short looking for Terry Danaher. Over the head. Here comes Watson again. He's got the pace again. Will it be goal number six? It is. Tim Watson do this once before for Essendon when he kicked five or six goals in an extraordinary performance from the half forward flank. But today it's been even better. He's taken the big marks from the explosive pace of Graham Dawson says he's such an apt description. Side bottom battle there with Merritt. Satorius lost with a bad hand past the boy who fumbled. <coughs> Still got plenty of time to break away from Q perusal. Downfield Danaher goes up above Thomas. Alan Day. Got tons of time. Short pass. Beautifully done. Watson takes the mark and takes a foot in the neck as well. David slipped, pulled out his micrometer, took the calculation once again, and short pass beautifully to Tim Watson. Well, if ever, one deserves another goal. This brilliant youngster does. He's coming in for his 17th kick. He's kicked six goals. He's now kicked seven. He's now kicked seven. Three in this term, and the term is only nine minutes, four in this term. The term is only nine minutes old. Six in half time, Doug. He kicked one in the first quarter, three behind in the second, two goals in the third, and four goals so far in this final term. And as you said, it's only nine minutes old, and they race away, the Bombers. Almost double St Kilda score as they lead by 51 points. 15, 18, 108, 8, 9, 57. Back in centre. Side bottom and Vanderhaar on the ball. Bennett. Ball from Kilda at home for this one. And a centre half back. It's Russell Green. Green. Oh, Barker! Barker! The matchup. Oh, an unbelievable climb by Trevor Barker above Scanlon. And there's no doubt about this. Slight, slim. Trevor Barker, he is one of the most sensational marks of league football seen in the past 20 years. Down it goes Field, and in front is Shaw, hits it down away from himself, taken by Mars, held it too long, and the free kick will go to St Gilda and be taken by Carter. Well, what a spectacular 10 minutes we've seen as Carter comes in. Left foot, as you can see, obviously he runs round, kicks the goal, hooks it too far, through for one behind. Fifty points to lead now in favour of Essendon. Eleven minutes into the final turn. Shaw, short. Day. Side bottom of the mark in the wing, and he's kicked to throw the arms. We've got a 15 metre penalty. And now play goes on, and there'll be a free kick to Essendon. As Bond is going to be penalised for holding the ball goes to Bennett. Bennett into the centre of the ground, looking for Davis. Two bites. Davis couldn't hold it. Bounces Pickle. Saru to Bond. To Sartori. Sartori straightening up a centre half forward. Long shot is offline. Evans and Shaw go after out of bounds on the pull. A penalty will go to, to Essendon and the, it will go to the fullback. 
Shaw, who has been a grand defender. He certainly has. Side bottom limping badly. Toss it goes to Neil Danaher, who is an absolute find, this young fellow. Boots it out with a perfect kick to Reed. Reed in a splash down towards Bennett. Bennett gathered in. Still got plenty of time to break away. Kicks it across over Reed's head to Danaher. Danaher played a splendid second half. Vanderhaar, I should say. Vanderhaar played a great second half. Awkward bounce. Chance for Madden. Left foot snap for goal and hooked it through. Essendon are killing Madden's second goal in this term. Beautiful. The second goal in the match. He, he missed one other easy one or difficult angle actually. But that was a beautiful kick by Simon Madden. Well, Essendon have bolted away. 16-18 Essendon, 114. Leading St Kilda 8-10-58. Since half time, Essendon have kicked 10-8 to St Kilda's one goal four. The Saints, in fact, have led by two points at half time. Carew and Madden jostle. Carew gets it down towards Duperuzel. He's a bit slow. Comes out to Reed. Been a good player on the wing all day for Essendon, even when they were struggling early in the game. And it's over the line for a throw in. All Essendon here at Windy Hill, they lead by 56 points. It's 114 to 58. 13 minutes into the final turn. 27 Madden, 31 Saru. Neither decisive. Bond for St Kilda. Sartori misses the run. Chance for Carter, who cleverly taps it back to Sartori. Sartori, his hand pass, 2 2 straight to Scanlon. Scanlon gets it out to Mansfield, and away go Essendon. Too far for Danaher, but. Uh, Thomas puts over two, Danaher goes in, cleverly, has to beat three, and Thomas gets in for St Kilda, his hand pass is an awkward one, but it comes out to Green, probably been St Kilda's best player all day, up towards centre half forward, and Neil Danaher takes a splendid mark, well Doug just said he's been a find, his kick was smothered, they dive on the ball, umpire Morgan says it's mine, it's centre half forward for St Kilda, as they trail by 58 points, 14 minutes into this final turn. Simon Madden has been a great player. Barker up above him. Picks it up beautifully. High brain kick off direction very badly out of bounds. The blemish in Trevor Barker's play is his kicking. He's a magnificent ball getter. And took a mark at the 10 minute mark that will be watched and viewed with amazement by everyone who sees it on television. Robert Shaw has been a very good player. Long left foot kick. Down the centre wing it goes. Front position, Madden. Chance out there for St Kilda. Oh, drops it again. Play goes on. Ugly pack. Eventually it's, it's uh, Mansfield again. In front is Thomas. He takes a nice mark between centre and centre half back. Onto the left third goes Thomas. He's looking for Barker. And he finds him. For the mark by Barker. Mark will be penalised. He was jostling Saru and creeping over the mark at the same time. Barker puts it on the attacking side of the ground looking for Lock. Good play by Nagel. He wants to run up, playing a bit flash, but he gets away with it. He wants to go on with Lock, which is silly, because you look for Terry Danaher. Chance for Day. Chipping in is Thomas. Scanlon hits on Mark. To Davis. Spoiled by Van der Haar. Danaher to Van der Haar. And that was Essendon at Windy Hill winning by 84 points, a real percentage booster, and that gets them in fourth place on the lead. Final quarter coming up at Windy Hill with Essendon leading 10 17 77 for St Kilda, 7 9 51. The Saints badly need a couple of goals. Side bottom, tapping the ball out. There's Duperuzel for St Kilda trying to gain control, picked up by Reed. Hand pass taken by Boyd and not wasting any time on the left half back flank. Burning Essendon with a good long kick up towards the uh, half forward line for the Bombers. Davis gets dragged. Was he in possession? The umpire says no. And it'll be a free kick to Adam Davis at the left half forward flank for the Bombers. Davis, for Essendon so far, has kicked three goals. He's a long way from goal here. We'll see what he can do with it. The Bombers going for their first win in ten matches if we count last.
Rocks have been out of business all day. Simon Madden's controlled the ruck. Side bottom and Saru have hardly been sighted. The ball back again, knocked away by Cunningham. Oh, he overran that that time, Scanlon, but the ball is finally picked up uh, by Neagle. Back here to Mars. Uh, to Mars Mar spins away nicely. It's a bad kick, but it's okay. Fletcher's got it there and plenty of time to do so. He's grabbed by Barker. He's been a quiet player, too, as we see Scanlon fumble the ball. A chance for Saru to tap it on the Barker, but neither can get a good play this time by Fletcher. That was sheer determination. Back there towards Van Aha. He was in plenty of trouble in that third quarter. I think he's had his number taken for uh, having a go at side, but a long kick. Must be 80 metres right up there to one. Merritt, the Merritt, the boy that came on. That's the difference I mentioned before. That the, the two sides that uh, we see that uh, Esma got fellows that can take marks around that goal area. It's Watson, Madden, and now this boy Merritt. And on the other hand, St Kilda haven't got a soul down there to take a mark. I think the evidence has been about 57 marks to 30 marks for the total of marks for the day. And he's put it through. It was an interesting statistic. The Essendon president, Colin Stubbs, told us at lunchtime there that Essendon had lost 10 games straight, if we count last year. Uh, they lost their last eight straight, and of course they've lost two so far this season, but they look like they're going to break the ice this afternoon, don't they? Well, they've dominated the air today, too, haven't they, Peter? There's no doubt about that. St Kilda have shown now they're lacking a bit of aerial power. That's for sure with uh, Madden and then Merritt. We saw Watson take a good mark before, too. The Saints valiantly trying to get the ball out of the centre, but they don't succeed. Mansfield for Essendon does so. Fires the ball up towards the uh, forward line. Here's Watson again, showing a clean pair of heels to Breen. Spins around. Trying to cope with those big marks. 
Of course, they've, they've uh, quietened uh, Vanderhaar down, but that's not enough. There's Madden, there's Watson, there's uh, quite a few of them down there. Danaher trying to take this mark. A good mark taken out here now. The little Bennett, he goes for a short pass. Getting up high, they couldn't get the ball. Here's Watson again. This is so dangerous. He fires for the goals. What's the result? after having a bad trot kicking now i think one goal four and one out of bounds has now kicked four goals straight and of course he's been a match winner down there on the forward line ball knocked out by big side bottom satori gets it out wide but there's boyd in the way can't quite pick it up he's clear now he's broken clear they're letting him go easily st kilda up it goes there to thomas he misses the ball davis he look for someone he's going for a pass what's the result he's got it about davis he won't place the kick he's a marvel I suppose on his day would be one of the best players in the league for using a football intelligence. No doubt about that. And of course, he's got a chance now for Watson to kick his seventh goal. Watson's only about 35 metres out, if that. He said before he was off target early, but by God, he's come back with vengeance now. The shot is okay. It's good for his seventh goal. And they go to 15 goals, 18, 108 points. This is Kilda, eight goals, 957. And they're throwing a heap than Kilda. So far this quarter, Essendon have added uh, five goals. Five goals, one actually, and St Kilda have added the one commentary goal. So not good enough by St Kilda. In fact, after half time, it's all Essendon because St Kilda failed to score a goal in that very torrid third quarter. Back into the centre, and the Essendon fans really revelling in this at the moment because their side has really hit its straps for the first time this season. They showed a glimpse of it against North Melbourne when they went down by 20 points. Bennett building them up towards half forward now and a safe mark should be brought down there uh, for St Kilda by Evans. Evans has kick up towards Barker. Magnificent mark from Trevor Barker. And he took one like that against Hawthorne in the goal square, which uh, we didn't see anything of. Been a pretty quiet play today, Peter, just to say. Since the first quarter, though, he yes. played fairly well early, but had a quiet second and third terms, and that's uh, probably the mark of the day by Trevor Barker. Barker in turn up towards the forward line. He's looking for a big mark down there, but they haven't got any, and that's been the case all day. Marsh gets caught with the ball and drops it. Should be a free to St Kilda, and in fact, it is the case to be taken for them by Carter. Carter was in kicking distance, some 35 metres out from goal, maybe 40. Pretty well directly in front. The wind's carrying it offline, though, and it will be through for one point to St Kilda when they badly need goals. So 15-18, 108 Essendon. St Kilda, 8, 10, 58. The difference is an even 50 points here at the Windy Hill ground. Shaw, short pass to Day. Day, the stopping the straight recruit for the bombers this year. There's side bottom. Oh, Daisy, that's giving it away, isn't it? Well, he was in the right that time, side bottom, because he was tapped on the leg with the boot that time, Peter. Call play on by the umpire, and there's no lot of loss between these two sides. It's going to be a free kick to Essendon. And it'll be taken down there by a little Bennett. The call play on from the umpire. Bennett going up towards the centre looking for Davis. It's punched away from him just at the last minute. A chance for it to be picked up by Saru. Saru over to Bond with good football. Bond and turned up to Satori. Satori steadies, but a high kick doesn't cover that much distance. In fact, I think it may be over the line. Yes, it is. And it'll be a penalty free kick to be taken for Essendon. Peter, I noticed that uh, side bottom is in the hands of the trainers after that incident. He's got a bad knee and he's at the centre half court position. It doesn't look too good to me. And this will be a big blow for St Gilbert. They couldn't win this match now, but for the rest of the season. Out it goes to Reed. And Reed's got it on his own. Gets a little short kick to bat it in trouble, but he eludes the Burns that time and got the ball clear. A short pass, it's okay. And a mark taken here by Vanderhaar. The Bombers are everywhere. There seems to be about 150 players out there for, their, for them at the moment. Up it goes to the full forward zone. There comes Matt now. He's got it now. He'll turn a snap for goal and watch the result. It's through. Oh, it's raining goals for the Bombers at the moment. 16 goals, 18, 114 points. to rest uh, St Kilda, 8 goals, 10, 58. Well, he played 11 minutes. Side bottom now back on his feet. But still limping a bit there too. Might have to come on the ground. Uh, this big dish of uh, probably replacing side bottom. But side bottom is limping as he walks down to the forward pocket position. 
be a bit of a blow to the, for the rest of the season. I say this fellow's got a bad knee, Peter. Well, they're a little bit lacking in height at the moment, Lou, as we have mentioned a couple of times in this quarter. And if they lose side bottom, they're even worse off than before. Saru's doing the ruck work now. He's been very quiet today. Zuperuza with a chance to pick up and get Colin quickly and a chance here for uh, Reed. The ball out towards the half forward flank on the outer side. It'll be both Reed and also a Keith to be thrown back into play. I see side bottom is still out there and uh, Disher now going back to the bench. So he must be okay. And let's hope so for St Kilda's sake because he's a player that uh, they depend on greatly. Throw in. Saru got high but missed the ball completely. Bond, a little quick kick up towards half four. They all miss it again. Here's a chance for Carter. He fists it back. Satori's there for St Kilda. Spins out of the pack well but a bad hand pass goes to Scanlon. And he gives it over to Mansfield in turn. Mansfield up towards half four. Though they all misjudged the fight. The, uh, the flight of that particular kick. Thomas is in there, Danaher for Essendon, Thomas burst his way through with pure strength, his hand pass is intended for Green, it wasn't a good one but he picked it up, Marsh is very fast, has to kick it hurriedly, two half forward now, Evans is underneath the ball, two short, and a fine mark taken by Neil Danaher, both Danaher's have played well today, that kick smothered, Evans on top of it, Danaher backed up again, and it'll be a ball up on the half forward line for St Kilda with 12 and a half minutes gone in the final quarter. There it goes now, Matt doing a great job. Got that knock out again. It comes down to Barker. Barker gets clear of the pack as the running shot's going over the top target. It'll be out of bounds and a penalty free kick will go down there to uh, sure him at uh, back pocket position. 114 points, Essendon to St Kilda 58. And we've played, as Peter said before, just on the 13-minute mark of this last quarter. Uh, the Bombers have kicked uh, how many goals for this quarter? Let's see. Six, really? Six goals for this quarter and uh, I think uh, uh, St Kilda only one. And of course, St Kilda have failed badly up four. They've got no one to take a mark. On the other hand, they've got plenty down there for the Bombers. They're marking all over the place. Trying to get clear now, and they just can't break. They're tackling very hard, as we see the ball driven away there by uh, Mansfield. Back towards centre-half four, but this time it's a good uh, safe mark by Thomas out there on that uh, wing position. He's kicking right across the ground, not gaining much distance at all. Barker in front, got a mark. Took a magnificent mark just about five minutes ago. A 15-metre penalty against Marsh. This brings him right down to the, the edge of the square. Kicks it out to the attacking side of the ground. Oh, golly. Neagle got up high, but he recovered well. But they just stood down and watched that time from Gill as he takes the ball away. Down towards the half ball of mine. There's Sarri Danaher going. He's got on top of his opponent, but he didn't get that one. Finally picked up by Day. Too slow to get rid of it. This allows Tom Thomas to get clear now and kick the ball back towards centre field again. At the back there is Gamble. Great mark. They're flying right over the top of them, the Bombers. They're really soaring. Up it goes now. Punched away by Vanderhaar. Back to Vanderhaar again from Danaher. And a running shot by Gamble. best on the ground because that'd be uh, taking something away from Tim Watson. Luke, well, also the two Danahers have played well, but uh, Simon Matten's been a real force here today. He's dominated the ruck, and of course he's been a very valuable player around the ground, taking marks as well as on the forward line. Terry Danaher has been a very good player, and his brother Neil, and the entire, you know, there's a lot of good players for the Bombers. Right. Ruck duels again, going St Kilda's way this time. Carter couldn't do much with it. Mansfield does, and breaks away from the pack again. Essendon have got it away from the centre bounce so many times. Here's Davis now. He's been a pretty handy player too. Well, we couldn't leave him out of the best players either. He's already kicked three goals for Essendon and has a chance to bring up his fourth from about 35 to 40 metres out, pretty well directly in front. Alan Davis shoots for goal. I don't think he's made any mistake or has he? He'll wait for the goal on pass. But this is fourth, and it's raining goals for Essendon as they round off this match with a very, very resounding effort. 58 from Kilda, Essendon now 18, 18, 126. Well, they've uh, lost 10 games straight, including eight last year and the first two this year, but they've come back with the vengeance today, and St Kilda, after having a glorious day last week against the Hawthorne, are right back in the hot seat because their form has been woeful today. Another new ball. That's the third for the day, I think. Well, they've got it back now. They've got it back again down the other, end, down the other end. end. Okay, there's plenty of honest people out here at Essendon. Okay, we wait now for the centre bounce. Matten against Saru. 
I said before, Matthews dominated the uh, centre bounces and all around the ground against the bigger uh, St Kilda players. Let's see where they can get this one. Getting into position, this is a bad bounce. Knocked out by Saru, over to Duke Peruse, he's cleared, he's grabbed by Bennett, finally gets a kick down there, but let's see what happens here now. Ball pushed away from Evans, uh, Gannon trying to get out, couldn't do so. They're all missing, finally it's picked up here by Bennett, who hooks the ball back there towards that half forward line. Pushed away by Thomas, with a long man, this gives him a chance, so he goes back into the game, and a good long punch, but Simon Madden doesn't attempt to pick it up, he goes for a soccer kick out there, wide and it's out of bounds, it'll be a throw in, out towards Essendon's half forward line. They've kicked uh, for this quarter, I think, about eight goals, haven't they? Right. Eight goals to one. So you can see they're well on top. They all missed that one as it comes down to Mansfield. Hooks the ball back, looking there for Terry Danaher, but it's a bit too long. Danaher going out, but taps it out. Trying to find his teammate, uh, Merritt, that time, but Merritt's got a chance to pick it up now. Out it goes to Davis. This is dangerous. He'll go, he's going to go for, he's gonna go for a hand pass. Over it goes to Watson. Back to Davis again. He wanted to an open goal and fire. And I think Lou summed it up pretty well with those words. They did look a pretty poor side at that stage of the game. St Kilda, they played a lot better earlier, uh, with the end result being that uh, the Saints actually led at half-time, 7-6 to 6-10. But if you look at the scores closely, Essendon coming right away in the final term. After half-time, St Kilda adding only two goals. Watson got seven for Essendon and Davis five. A key three for St Kilda. Essendon had many good players, but possibly the three best would have been Watson, Madden and Terry Danaher for the Saints. Thomas, O'Keefe and Bond were their best. Uh, one uh, bad result insofar as Essendon concerned, Van der Haar was reported by boundary umpire Nichols and field umpire Chapman on a charge of alleged allegedly striking Gary Seinbottom of St Kilda in the third quarter and he will appear before the VFL Tribunal. So much for Essendon.